Hey everybody, it's Kevin DeWalt from ProLego. So I want to talk to you today about a concept that I call Enterprise Artificial General Intelligence or Enterprise AGI. So what is Enterprise AGI and why should you care? Well, almost every company has some sort of AI running in its operations. An um, example is the a facial recognition you have on your smartphone or maybe systems that your data scientists have built that make it easier to find and extract information out of large documents. All these systems are based on what we call narrow AI. And that what that means is that they're very good at performing very specific tasks. And sometimes they can perform these tasks even better than people can perform them. Um, Enterprise AGI is something completely different and it doesn't currently exist anywhere in any company. So artificial general intelligence, AGI, is different from narrow AI. It's not an evolution of narrow AI, it's something completely different. Um, and it's a type of information processing system that's able to do reasoning functions, make decisions, explore data and assign tasks uh, with reasoning capabilities that are comparable to what a person could do. And when you take those type of software functions and you deploy them inside of an enterprise and you build systems on that, to, like systems with them to run your business, that's called enterprise AGI. Um, so so what, you know, why should you care about enterprise AGI? Um, well, as it turns out that uh, we are a lot closer to building and starting to deploy these kind of systems than, than anybody realizes. And in fact, as I'm going to explain in a moment, I believe that we're gonna start building them in 2023 and they're gonna start having an impact a lot sooner than almost anyone uh, can imagine. And what do I mean by having an impact? I mean that every job function is soon gonna change. They're either going to evolve or they're gonna disappear. And I notice I said job function, I didn't necessarily say job. Um, entire departments are going to collapse, be delimited, be consolidated. Uh, product roadmaps that people have you know, mapped out for the next two years, they're going to be scrapped. Uh, work on existing large IT systems and inside an organization, new development on them is going to stop. And a lot of products in the marketplace that are designed to be able to support the type of information processing that we've always done, a lot of them are, are going to get crushed in the marketplace once investors realize what's actually happening. So why is all this gonna happen so soon? It's because every business process that exists, um, every job function, every IT system, every, really every piece of software that's ever been built is all organized under one principle. And that is, the, the principle is that the human beings are the ones and the only ones in the business that are doing the reasoning and the thinking. And that's about to change. Um, and so why is that about to change? Well, it's because of these large language models that are emerging. And in particularly because of what happened on March 14th, 2023, when OpenAI released the latest version of their large language model called GPT-4. And GPT-4 has demonstrated the capability that it's gonna allow us to start building enterprise AGI at five to 10 years or maybe 20 years longer, you know, sooner than any of us thought we would be able to because it is so fundamentally different than anything we've seen in the past. So GPT-4 is not yet another machine learning model. It's not a simple evolution from OpenAI's previous models. It's something completely different. And you can take a look at some of the examples and some of the videos I share in my essay on this topic and see that it's, it's able to perform reasoning tasks in ways that are comparable to what human beings can do. Um, and when you start thinking about the, the implications of what it can do, it makes you realize that we're going in an entirely new direction of building software. Um, however, there's a lot of misconceptions about GPT-4 and it really hasn't sunk in to most people yet why things are gonna change. And there's a couple reasons for that. Um, First off, GPT-4 is not yet widely available. So you have to have the paid version of ChatGPT, which is where most people are getting exposure to this technology to be able to, to use GPT-4. And it's been slow, it's been a little bit buggy on the API, so it really hasn't been the best efficiency tool up to this point. Additionally, if you wanna start building applications with uh, OpenAI's API and use one of their large language models, 
There's a waiting list for GPT-4, so a lot of developers and software teams haven't even had a chance to test it out or use it yet. But more than that, there, we're kind of being blocked a little bit by, I guess, a, a framing of what is actually happening. And by that, I mean there are a lot of people who are looking at GPT-4 and, and, and are coming out of sort of the history of thinking about creating intelligent machines and, and what does intelligence mean and what's the nature of consciousness. And as a result, they're looking at what GPT-4 does and they're being very, dis they're kind of um, dismissive of what's actually happening. Uh, you know, this isn't really intelligent, it's not aware, it's just, you know, copy and paste, it's just, it's overfit on previous data sets. I mean, a lot of informa this information is out there. And some of these are very valid criticisms if you are trying to create the first truly artificial general intelligence and you're trying to you demonstrate, you know, a, a unique research breakthrough of something that can think. Um, that's not my concern, and that's not the concern of my clients. My clients don't care whether or not a particular system is conscious. They just care that it works and solves a business problem. So if I'm working with a bank on a compliance problem, they wanna to try to figure out how to automate a particular compliance process so they don't have to have their lawyers spending hours a month doing PDF, you know, control F searches on stacks of PDFs to find the right location of a, of a policy concept. Um, they just care that it works, not, not whether it works and whether it's conscious. So that's one reason. Um, the second reason is that people are getting stuck on the limitations of GPT-4. And this is, um, this is a very understandable reaction when you learn about the technology. So GPT-4 has a lot of problems, and OpenAI is very transparent about this. It, it doesn't have memory, it makes mistakes, what they call hallucinations, which is just you know, making errors. Uh, you know, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't task and plan very well. And like all the training data stopped, I think, in September 2021, and so you don't even have current information. And so when you look at all of the, the problems of this technology and the fact that it can produce inconsistent answers every time, Anybody who's ever built any kind of software system looks at this and says, well, what the heck can I possibly do you know, with this thing? This is just you know, a useful novelty, but you can't build a solution with this. And if you're actually trying to build an enterprise AGI system with GPT-4 independently, they're right, <laughs> because it has all of these incredibly limiting flaws. But that's a misunderstanding. Um, because it turns out you can overcome most of these limitations by pairing GPT-4 up with other tools, and that changes everything. So GPT-4 in isolation is not good enough yet to start building enterprise AGI, and that's why a lot of people and a lot of engineers who are paying attention to this space are not as aggressive in their predictions, predictions as I am, because they're not really paying attention to what's happening in the evolving ecosystem and what it's really like to deploy these systems inside of a large enterprise. Um, so to be able to start building enterprise AGI with GPT-4, we need two things. We need a way to use it as, a, use it as an intelligent agent. And that's just a fancy term for a software function that's able to autonomously make decisions and assign tasks and do reasoning across lots of pieces of information. We've had agents in software you know, for decades, but they've, we've never had been able to build one that has the kind of reasoning capability of GPT-4. And when you can build a system where GPT-4 functions as kind of the brains behind the operation and does a lot of the information processing and tasking and decision making, calling other tools, suddenly it opens up the possibility of being able to automate huge parts of your enterprise. So that's the first thing we need. We need a way to make use GPT-4 as, as an intelligent agent. The second thing we need is we need a way to pair GPT-4 with tools that allow it to overcome its limitations. So what kind of tools am I talking about? I'm talking about being able to search the internet so you have current information. I'm talking about you know, what they call memory, which is being able to store inf and retrieve information out of a database. The ability to write software, to run software, to call programs like Wolfram Alpha so you can do math more effectively, or to be able to you know, send email, reach out to your calendar, to do uh, pair it with everything that allows it to do what it does well and overcome its limitations with other tools. So, once again, what do we need? We need the ability to run GPT-4 as an agent, and we need to pair it with other tools. 
And we now have an emerging new type of software um, framework to be able to build those applications. And the first one that I know of is called Langchain. And Langchain, you, know, you can be forgiven if you've never heard of it because it's, it's barely a company. They just raised money recently and it was an open source project six months ago. ago. Um, and what's important about Langchain is not whether it's a great software product, but it's the way of thinking that they, they've come up with of how we're going to use these uh, large language models like GPT-4. So the Langchain, as its name suggests, is a way of chaining language models together. And of course, that's part of the function, the functionality. But more importantly, what it does, it, it solves the two problems that I discussed earlier. One, it allows you to build a system where you can use a large language model as an agent. And the second is it allows you to, to be able to integrate tools and build a software application that allows you to overcome GPT-4's limitations and still build automation with it. And when you, combine, when you combine the flexibility of Langchain with the reasoning power of GPT-4, it changes everything. And so we have all of the tools necessary to start building incredibly powerful applications that are, are going to quickly result in mass automation of every business process that in any organization. Now, the actual timing of these type of, the, the timing of the arrival of this technology and the distribution, it, we can all debate that and we can all have an intelligent conversation and you know, predict you know, when it's going to start happening. Um, and nobody has the answers yet because this technology is too new. But what is no longer in doubt is that this wave of innovation is coming. This is not something that's often some abstract future. We have all the tools to start doing this now. We've got a couple of minor things that we need to overcome in the next month or so before I, I really see the evidence that we're ready to start doing proof of concepts inside the enterprise with this technology, but we're not very far off. In fact, somebody may have already uh, worked through most of them and I just haven't seen it yet. Um, so uh, anyway, let me just quickly recap what I discussed about Enterprise AGI and uh, kind of summarize the, the key points for, for uh, anybody who's watching this. And so Enterprise AGI is a new type of technology that we are going to start building in 2023 that's going to change everything about business and work and, and job functions inside companies. And you need to start preparing now. And we know this is the case because we have this powerful disruptive innovation called GPT-4 that nobody really was predicting to happen as soon as it did. But now that it has happened, we can use new type of frameworks called Langchain to start building systems that allow us to begin automating almost every business process uh, inside every company. Um, and those changes are gonna start happening in 2023 as we kick off the initial proof of concepts. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.